if your client is like, I want to grow in some way, it's like, you don't need to do all of them. Just choose one thing that you know works that you've seen work for other people and start implementing and implementing because it's all about consistency. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Reagan, and you've discovered Unicorns Unite. This is a podcast for freelancers, service providers, virtual assistants, and curious listeners who would like to experience the freedom and flexibility of working virtually. We're the magic makers, movers and shakers, and the real people doing the work behind the scenes of online businesses. Welcome to Unicorns Unite. Hey there, it's Emily Reagan. I'm so happy to have you here today. I am sharing a Facebook interview that I did with my friend Jessie Lewis, a copywriting coach for online business owners. She's going to help us get better at audience building for our clients. Now, this was a Facebook Live that I did in my free group, which you can find the link to in my show notes. I do a Facebook Live show every week, or at least try to. And I was so excited to have Jessie in the group to talk about email marketing. She's going to share critical components of a stellar lead magnet and how to get it in front of more people so your clients can build their audience and build their email list. Also, Jesse has some big tips on what people usually do wrong with their lead magnets. So just so you know what not to do for your clients and you can steer your clients in the right direction. You're so much more than just a VA, so you already know that you offer invaluable input and advice. And this email list thing is a big deal. So this one's going to be a fun one. I met Jesse at the Copywriting Club in real life. That's called TCC IRL. And it's always fun to connect with my talented behind the scenes friends and learn their stories. So let's dive in. I'm so glad to have you here. Will you tell everybody a little bit about your background, where you live now and how you got into this online world? Yeah. Well, thanks so much for having me on. Um, Yeah. A little bit about myself. I am a copywriting coach for online business owners. I teach people how to write for their business, but also grow their audience using their own unique voice. So um, I've been in the marketing world for about seven years now and been self-employed for almost three years now. And uh, as of today, I run a group coaching program called the Co-Writing Club. And it's been a journey. I don't know how deep you want to get into that. <laughs> I kind of want to know like a little bit of the the transition story. Like how did you, because this whole online world is so, I mean, everyone here knows about it, but, but obviously we're a select few. So like, how did this open up to you? Yeah. So um, it sounds a lot more linear than it was, uh, but, but the linear version is that um, out of college, I was working at an ad agency and uh, I had gotten in as an intern, had like, you know, moved my way up through the ranks and I was doing social media management and blog content. And um, I noticed that a, a coworker of mine had quit and started freelancing. And I was like, huh. And then I found out how much per hour she was charging. I was like, Huh. <laughs> and I, I, that's when I really started, you know, looking into, it. I'm like, is this viable? Could I do this? Have I been doing this long enough in order to start doing it? Um, and at that time I've started listening to some podcasts and started hearing more about how this whole online world worked. And sure enough, a little while in, I decided to take the leap for the first time. That was the first time. And okay. yeah, I did freelancing for about eight months. Uh, but at that point I couldn't figure out how to get more clients. I was at a point where I was, I had a couple of referrals and I was like, this is still not where I thought it would be. Everyone made it sound so easy. Right. And so then I, um, so I go back to a regular job for a little bit and, uh, walking into that job, you know, the first couple of months, wonderful company, but I knew instantly I'm like, I'm really cut out for this self-employed work. Like this was probably not the best decision. And so, um, once I could responsibly do so, I moved back out, relaunched this time, did it right. I feel like this time I took the time to work on that transition, get some testimonials ahead of time and uh, go in with a little bit more of a niche. So the first time I had done it, I was like, I'll write anything. I can do mostly blog articles, but I'll write anything. And this time I launched, I said, no, I'm doing web copy. This is my thing. I write websites for people. And then it's just kind of snowballed from there. I went from writing to uh, transitioning to teaching it as a coach and then to doing that in a group program. So can I ask you, when you were at an agency, what were some of the things that you didn't like that told you that you needed to be self-employed, like to share some of those pain points with everybody. Yeah. Well, agency life across the board, if you've never worked in an agency, it's very much trial by fire. Um, This is only, I've talked to lots of other people who come from agencies and this kind of tends to be a really similar story is like agencies are fantastic for 
getting in there, getting lots of, you know, work experience, uh, putting on a lot of different hats because everything is always on fire. Always. <laughs> There's always something going wrong. There's always, you know, um, a, a client that you need to serve in a different way, people uh, taking on different roles. So it can be a really good training ground, but ultimately I'm like, this is not how I want to spend my career. So yeah. What were your hours? Like my hours are actually pretty normal. Like oh, yeah. it was, I think, and I think it was because largely I was fairly junior. So I hadn't gotten up into the super heavy levels of responsibility. And also I was, you know, I'll be honest, halfway checked out. I'm like, no, I'm leaving at five. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, my priorities. no, this is good to know. I feel like I have worked in an agency because of I don't know, television, Mad Men. I don't know. I feel like I have it. When I look back, I'm like, no, I actually haven't. But I already, <laughs> I already can picture how I would feel. Because That's so I funny. That this is a better life for me. So just hearing that like gives me some validation too, that oh, yeah. I skip that step, step. However, I did do the one man band of nonprofits where I was doing everything. Yeah. So I worked with a couple agencies for like in kind, but I just... I knew I could skip that step. <laughs> yeah, I feel like any sort of trial by fire, anytime that you are the sole person in charge of something within a job, it's like you learn fast. I think you only need to have that experience once, if, if at all, but yeah, for totally. sure. So why did you pick website copy to focus on? Um, honestly, mm-hmm. it was because it sounded like something I could package up a little bit more. And I was really tired of writing blog articles. Um, it's funny because when I was in college, like I was an English major, but I, I hated writing papers. I hated writing papers. And then I graduated. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just made a career out of writing papers. And so when I, you know, was trying to be more intentional with it, I was like, okay, you know, what do I really like? What do I really, uh, you know, feel like I could excel in? And that's really where I landed. I had done um, enough of it before. And, um, I spent a little bit more time, you know, learning some best practices, learning some different ways of doing it. I also, I I have to say, I had a a mentor who that was her specialty as well. She did messaging and website copy. And so it was really easy to learn from her and see, Oh, okay. That's how that's done. Then I can kind of pick that up from there, make it my own. I think blogging is a good way to get your foot in the door. So I like that you kind of had, you do have that linear, like step-by-step and then website copy is, I, I agree with you way more packageable and Mm -hmm. probably worth more. Yeah, it is a lot easier to sell uh, website copy at a higher price than blog content, just because blog content is so, you know, you have to pump out a lot of it. And um, you can definitely charge higher amounts, but it makes it a lot harder to find clients who will pay those. those What kind of blogs did you do? Now I'm curious. Oh, again, it was a, it was a period where I'm just like, all right, anything. So um, I worked, uh, a lot of it was for, like clients of clients, like I still worked for the agency actually, but I had quit, still had good relationships. So they hired me as a freelancer um, oh. and then had some other contacts. So it was everything from like working for um, <laughs> another uh, digital uh, marketing company and writing blogs for them, working for a um, like a rehab center, writing articles for them. It's just really random. Those are probably my two big ones though. It reminds me a lot of my journalism major where you just get to dive enough into a lot of topics and learn about it. And, you know, unless you're a beat reporter, I mean, you learn a lot of different things and you can really like, that's a skill, that's a gift. And you being like an English major, being able to write those articles that like, I I don't know about you, but I had to write about DIY stuff and painting. Mm. And I mean, I don't know that stuff, but this ability to, to simplify processes and, I don't know, bring in the keywords. Like it, it is a gift and it is needed. So I'm, I'm kind of just glad we touched on that. And I, I like that we just have that ability to share and teach. And now we're both teaching a different way. <laughs> like we yeah. were teaching words and now we're teaching through our courses and our membership. So, okay. Well, I love hearing the background of how people get started. I think it's always inspiring because you see someone online and you're like, okay, yeah, they're successful or they're, you know, how did they get there? Like, what did that mm-hmm. actually like. And so I teach a lot of my unicorn VAs, just get your foot in the door and figure out what you like. And for some of them, they are writers, a couple mm-hmm. of them are interested in copywriting. So this is going to be really good for them to hear from you. So what do you have to teach us today? Yeah. Okay. So I'm excited. Yeah. We're going to be talking about audience building, but specifically when we talk about 
audience building online, what we're really talking about is building your email list. Like everything else grows in tandem. Of course, there's social media, you know, there's, uh, you know, maybe physical lists of actual addresses. But when we're talking about growing an audience, it all comes back to the email list because that's really who you have direct access to. You know, social media, I hear so many people who you know, spend so much time building like an Instagram following when Instagram was hot and then the Instagram algorithm changes and suddenly you don't have nearly as much contact with all the people that you just gathered to yourself. But email marketing is steady and that's really where we focus. So talking about how to build an audience specifically through email and where that all begins is of course your lead magnet. So um, a lead magnet for those of you who guys are are not familiar is also called like a reader magnet or an opt-in incentive. And it's just something that you essentially trade in exchange for an email. So anytime it's like a, Hey, get this freebie, enter your email. That's lead magnet. Most of the guys, I feel like should know this at this point, but yeah. um, a lot of you are familiar with mine. I have a list of 10 of my most requested VA tasks that I've done in my career. And a lot of you have opted in for that. You've got the emails sent to you. You've got a couple other emails with call to actions. That is a lead magnet. And we also posted Jessie's into the description where you can get her a high converting email guide. And when you do that, that is her lead magnet. So now you know what we're talking about. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And chances are a lot of people have already opted into it before, even if you've never known what it was called necessarily. But um, what's always interesting to me, so lead magnets are super powerful for growing your list because of course, everybody wants a free thing. It's that first step with, you know, developing that relationship with someone, but it can be a little bit tricky to actually nail down like what makes a good lead magnet because there is such a thing as a bad lead magnet. (laughs) So the problems, I'll just start out. The problems that I typically see with lead magnets are a couple of things. Number one, ones that are too big. And so I speak from experience here, but there's a tendency when we're thinking, okay, I'm giving away something for free. It's like, what is the most valuable thing I could possibly create that would get people to opt into my email list? And what that ends up in a lot of people's minds is, okay, I need to write a book and <laughs> they write an entire book. And, and I'm raising my hand here because I've done that twice. And <laughs> And it took me a while to realize, I'm like, wait a minute, like quantity does not equal value. Um, yeah. And even more realistically, it might actually be harmful because uh, if they have to read the entire thing in order to get something helpful from it, well, they're never going to get to the end, right? Yeah. The lead magnet instead should be something really tight. It should be a quick win. Along those same lines are lead magnets that are really vague or general, I see a lot of people, um, you know, on their on their websites, they'll be saying something like, you know, get my seven tips for success. And it's like, <laughs> okay, like I could see how that could maybe be valuable, but tell me a little bit more, like success in what? What, 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 what kind of tips? You know, what like am tennis? I downloading here? About tennis, sir. <laughs> right, right. So that's the second problem that I typically see. And then the third one is uh, lead magnets that aren't actually aligned with the target audience. And this one is a little bit less common. I think that more people are, you know, getting a little bit more strategic with this, but it's still really hard to, you know, if you have a, you know, kind of vague niche or a wider group, it's like, how, how do I even start with this? And they end up with a lead magnet that doesn't quite bring in the right people or, you know, people who hold on to a lead magnet for years, even though they've pivoted and are now doing, you know, a different audience entirely. And there's just not that, that alignment anymore. I'm glad you said that because that I really think is key. It is about bringing in the right people. Just because you can get something, give away something free and everybody wants it doesn't mean that email subscriber and that person is going to be right for your client's offer down the road. So you really need to be thinking in terms of how can we find the right person who's going to be ready to buy from my client later. So this is key. I see a lot of lead magnets that are also very, I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I feel like I see a lot that are the same. Mm-hmm. Do do? Well, yeah, especially ones that are that big category <laughs> tend to kind of morph together a lot. Yeah. But um, no, it's interesting that you say that because um, what it is, I think there's a mentality shift that needs to happen. Um, a lot of us, you know, we think audience building, it's like, oh my gosh, I just need to build the biggest list that I possibly can. Yeah. But it's like, no, no, no. So, a list of a hundred people who are super tuned in to what you have to say is infinitely more valuable than a list of 10,000 people who are just a bunch of random strangers. Yes. Like that's just, you know, at the end of the day, and plus you don't want to be paying for all of those people. So, yeah. um, so with that, when you're thinking about your lead magnet, the first thing you need to do is start thinking um, like, what kind of journey am I creating? Cause that, the lead magnet is the first step in a journey. So um, 
you know, how can you make sure that you're talking to the right people before you begin that, that big nurturing process of getting them to the purchase? Yes. And so the reason everyone, I really brought Jesse in here today. A lot of my students who've just gone through the crash course, your clients are coming to you. They know they need an email freebie. They know, and you know, they, you need to help them grow their email list and they're going to come to you with ideas. Like what is, how does this sound? How does this sound? And you're going to use these three things Jesse taught you to help them find the right answer. Like what is the right lead magnet? Because your client at this level in the game doesn't have a lot of money to build all these lead magnets that go nowhere. You want to, you might end up having to test things, but you want to make sure you follow Jesse with it. You know, not being too overwhelming and too big, not being too vague, making sure it's the right people and just get it right the first time. So your client's going to be looking for you for your advice and for you to be the sidekick and you're going to have to just resort back to this training. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and a lot of this too, just so everyone knows the link, I believe you just posted to my website. That's where you can grab. There's a, I, the guide on there is all about all of this. It's how to create a good lead magnet. And so, um, you know, if you're taking notes, you'll definitely want to grab that because it has some additional info as well. But, um, so let's talk about the, the flip side of it though. Because that's yeah. kind of like what makes a bad lead magnet. <laughs> so how do we how do we do one from the ground up? That's you know the good side, and it's pretty much the opposite, right? So the first thing the first thing before anything else, we have to think about who is your audience or your client's audience. Who is the person that you want to target with this? And um, we could get in, you know into a whole conversation about niching, but the simple way to think of it is, you know, what do they have in common? What are their common struggles? What are their common desires? And how can you meet them? there. Um, Similarly with that, it's time to start thinking about, well, what is one thing that you can teach them? Either one quick takeaway or one quick win. Mm -hmm. I like to think of this in terms of like, what is one piece of the puzzle that you could give them? Typically like a first step or even a pre-step before they would buy uh, a package from your client or even something that would help them overcome a limiting belief. Those are like the three categories, a first step, a pre-step, we're overcoming a limiting belief, right? Is there something that they don't even believe that this is possible, but you could maybe give them a free challenge through a lead magnet that would help them realize that, oh, I, I could I could do this. And then yeah. they would be able to work with the client. That's kind of what my lead magnet does because it's just 10 things you probably didn't even think about. One of mm-hmm. them is watermarking photos and editing and fo- photos and you know saving them by that right SEO. And I have built my business starting with like little piddly things like that, that need, people needed help doing in their business and were willing to hire out. So I hope that my lead magnet opens people's eyes and helps them get over that belief that there actually is work out there and you don't need to be a programmer <laughs> or like a coder. Right. Hey, this podcast is sponsored by my very own GIF and sticker making workshop. Turn your clients' videos into GIFs design branded stickers for Instagram stories, and master the art of making your own GIF for promo emails. This is fun unicorn magic that we can do behind the scenes easily for our clients. The workshop is one hour, just $17.99. The link is in the show notes or go to emilyreaganpr.com slash GIF workshop. That's G-I-F workshop. Back to the show. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. And then I want you to tell me how your lead magnet fits into this. Oh, for sure. Um, no, so I just wanted to give a couple examples too. Um, okay. just kind of uh, get some get some brain juices flowing because I I think this is the part where people struggle the most is what I typically see because like finding that first topic is like oh my gosh like I could do it I could do anything or maybe there's nothing coming to mind yet but um you know if you were a, a, a a regular example I like to use is like if your client is a designer, let's say someone someone who's a branding designer, and um, they're you know asking you for guidance or for ideas. Well, what is that first step of their process? You know, maybe it's something like choosing brand colors or how to choose your fonts. Those are things that even they may sell as part of the package, but that could easily make a freebie, right? And something, and the whole idea here is that as soon as they you know got the freebie, they would think, oh, like, oh, okay. I you know, this is, this is helpful. If they give, gave me that much value in a free thing, how much more value are they going to, am I going to get from actually working with them? Yes. They're going to be asking what's next. How do I work with Jesse? Cause her lead magnet was so good and it taught me so much. So what do I need to know next? And they're going to turn to you or your client. Right. Right. And then you had a, a question there about my lead magnet or. Oh yeah. How does your lead magnet fit into that? So, I mean, I just wanted to hear in your own words. So yours oh, yeah. is, well, I wanted, actually, I wanted you to go through the like three good things and then tell me how your lead magnet fits into all. Okay. 
Okay. So, um, perfect. Yeah. So mine is, uh, once again, it's it's kind of a long title, which was actually um, another thing is give it a really like clear, specific title. Talk about what that outcome is. Go anti-vague. Um, okay. Tell them what they're going to get from it. And so mine is the ultimate guide to high converting lead magnets. <laughs> it's a lead yeah. about lead magnets. But I made it specifically because uh, I realized a lot of people in uh, my audience were struggling with this. So that's really where it started was my audience. Uh, my audience is people typically who are audience builders, who are personal brands um, mm -hmm. and who are building some sort of email list. So what do they need? They first need to be able to get people on their list. So the lead magnet is that first step. And then the smaller is better. For me, it's if you if you download it, you'll see it's only a couple pages. It takes you through a couple steps. But at the end, you have your quick win. You have everything you need in order to create and launch your first lead magnet. And then the title is, uh, is specific, perhaps a little bit too specific, but I go for long titles personally. <laughs> it's like really clear what the outcome is. So I like how you say high converting because to me as a business owner, that tells me, oh, this is how I can up my game. Like if I already have one and it's not doing great, it's going to tell me like to, to figure out how to make it better. And it also, you see it in the language that I can relate to and it will attract the right person. So I think we did yeah. a good job. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> So those are the basics for how to create a lead magnet. But of course, then the next question is like, how do we, how do we actually start using that? So are we ready to dive into that part? Yes. yes. Okay. And this is a big part of what we do as a digital media VA is we help our clients promote their, on their social media. We help them do emails. We help them try to grow that email list and get that lead magnet out there. So this is totally relevant and I'm excited. Awesome. So, so yeah, I think of it usually in two stages. And it really depends on um, everyone listening. It depends on what stage your client is in, whether they're starting from scratch or if they have any sort of existing audience. So first I'm going to give this the starting from scratch kind of guidance here, because our okay. goal is just to get those first 10 people on an email list, because that's what builds that momentum. It, uh, you know, gives you the the motivation to start getting consistent with regular email sending, right? Because that's the goal is to start, you know, building up towards some sort of weekly or bi-weekly email. So to just get those first 10 people on there, we can be a little bit, you know, uh, broad uh, as far as who we invite on. But um, what you would want to instruct your client to do is to reach out individually to people who they already have a relationship with. And that's the key here. It has to be friends, has to be like real relationship here, no cold emailing. But um, and you, this could even be something valuable to provide them as like a template, but uh, use language in that email that just says something like that, like, hey, friend, um, hey, so and so. So, um, you know, we were talking about X, Y, Z the other day, you know, and I've been getting a lot of questions around such and such topic. So you can hear that it's really personalized, right? I've been getting a lot of, of questions about this topic. So um, I decided to start a weekly email series to answer those questions. And I thought it would be valuable to you because of X, Y, Z. Once again, personalize it. If you'd like to join, you also get this free guide, this insert your lead magnet here. And then here's the link and put a link to the form. So you can see an email like this is really, it's extremely personal. This is not like a mass sending email to everyone on your, you know, everyone who you have contact with. And, and the goal is just to get those first 10 signups. That's awesome. I love the personalization part of it and just start slow. It's not going to come with a thousand, you're not going to build it and a thousand people are just going to join it. It takes a right. long time to get that snowball going and start with the people, you know, start with a personal touch. The other thing that um, is valuable at this stage, especially is to start gathering information about what kinds of things people want to be hearing from your client about. And so uh, you, this, this part could be a little bit more cookie cutter, but when people do sign up, you could then trigger an email or have your client send an email that says something like, Hey, you know, I saw you signed up. Thanks so much. I'm so happy real quick. What's your biggest question or challenge around topic? I'll make sure it gets answered in a future email. And then you're having those first contacts create a full uh, list of things that they want the client to be writing about in those emails. And whether that's something their client is writing or something that you're writing for the client you suddenly have a, a good collection of, of a starting point. And then from there, it's just about delivering. It's about starting to email weekly or at least every other week. So it's, it's a good way to get the ball rolling. Yes. And a lot of the clients who are starting out, they know they need to email every week. They don't always have the confidence. And so as their VA, you decide to serve those 10 people on the list and just do it. And you'll be surprised by the end of the year, how much it will grow. I mean, it's not going to grow by itself, but you put that effort into those emails and make it a priority. Your client will 
this is what they hire me to do all of the time. I do this a lot. It's on my most requested tasks, like help them email weekly, help them figure out what to talk Mm -hmm. about. Those those emails, like Jesse said, to gather more pain points and more language and more ideas from the people on your list. So this is so good. Yeah. And so, so what you mentioned there is, you know, the idea of actually then growing that. So at this point you have, you have your lead magnet, you've got your first 10 people on the list or at, you know, this, uh, I want to talk more about how to get that lead magnet in front of more people. And so if there are someone who does have say a big social media following, but no email list, you may be able to skip that for those first 10 people. It's still helpful, but you may just go ahead and start rolling into, um, the strategies that have a much wider audience. So I just want to walk through a couple of those, um, some things that I'm seeing that are working right now. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So first of all, we're going to start small. This is like the the baby version of of getting the lead bank in front of more people because it's still one-on-one and that is engaging in Facebook groups. And um, I bring this up. I think that this would be a little bit tougher to do as a VA, but still actually still possible. But the Mm -hmm. idea here is that, um, you know, Facebook groups are where so many connections are happening right now. Facebook groups are where it's at, (laughs) but um, people are going to Facebook groups and asking questions and looking for help on different things. And so if you are paying attention, if you have chosen, you know, two or three groups that you are devoting attention to, you know, as a client or as a VA, uh, that those are places where you can start to respond to questions and offer value. I'm trying to think about how you might do this as a VA. This could be something where maybe you are, you know, answering questions, you know, within the client's account, you know, if that's something that they want to outsource in that way, or even if it's something that you are recommending your client as, you know, a third party, I, that's getting a little bit in the weeds there, but just as a general technique, this is something that you could, you know, teach your clients themselves is to go into Facebook groups, look for questions and just be as helpful as possible because the opportunities for sharing that lead magnet will come up. You have to pay attention to group rules, of course. You know, don't be don't be spamming groups. But a lot of times there'll be someone who's like, hey, you know, does anybody know how to do this? Then you can just respond like, well, you know, I, I have so many thoughts on this and um, I actually wrote a blog post on this or I actually, you know, created a guide. Would you like that and get permission? And once they say yes, then you can send over that URL. Yes, good tactic. I love it. Okay, so number two is social media. So those, uh, those clients who already do have a following, it's then time to start bringing in um, a, a new kind of post into the marketing mix. And that's going to be one that is specifically promoting the lead magnet. And you can just start putting this on rotation, you know, make a couple of different versions, but um, have a post that talks about uh, the struggles that the lead magnet addresses. And then what is inside the lead magnet? And then, you know, where they can go get the lead magnet. And that's a way to start drawing those people from the, uh, from the social media onto the email list where you have more of that sticking power. Now, how often would you post a lead magnet post? (laughs) I would do it, um, more frequently when you, at first, you know, it all depends on how often you're posting in general. Um, but let's say you're posting on a platform every day. Well, then maybe for two weeks, you post it, you know, two times a week. That would probably be a, a pretty, um, good amount that may it's getting seen, you know, there's a good chance of it being seen, but it's not being um, obtrusive. Of course, each post is going to be different. So you're not just spamming the same post over and over. You're talking about different aspects of the lead magnet or maybe different like uh, ways that someone could use it, uh, different photos of the lead magnet or different, you know, lifestyle photos that you're using to promote that lead magnet. So you're talking about in different ways, but um, yeah, I'd say two weeks, two posts per week would be good. And then from there, zoom out to maybe once a week and then maybe two every other week because you still want to be bringing it up for for new followers who maybe have never even heard about it, right? Yeah. And for those of you helping your clients with their social media, make a little note right now that you should have a list building post twice a week at least and put that in your rotation. Yep. Yep. Very important stuff. Okay. Third one. So getting your lead magnet in front of more people. um, And this is where we start getting to the big, the the bigger tactics that are really going to lead to um, long-term growth. And so the third one is just really big. It's content, (laughs) creating regular content and attaching the lead magnet to it. So um, when you think of your your marketing, we have to think of it almost in terms of, uh, you may have heard of like a marketing funnel. So we're getting people in the door. Um, we're building awareness for the business. And then the goal is to get them to take an action. And so content fills that role entirely by um, 
if you're creating content, you can be promoting it to Pinterest, to Medium, you can be search optimizing it, you're getting it out in front of people, and it catches the attention of the right people. And then they can scroll down by the time they're at the bottom of the blog post or whatever kind of content it is, they're interested enough to say, okay, I can go ahead and opt into this lead magnet. That sounds interesting. That's a natural next step. So that's a really big one. Because again, like, write blog posts or, or start a video show. That's all really big. But this really is, this is the heart of content marketing. Even when we're talking about social media, um, social media is tied so intimately to those blog posts, to whatever it is. And um, I know, like I can just talk about my own list growth is based entirely off of content at this point. I do very little, you know, visibility pushes. I don't run ads for my list. All I've done is written a couple articles. Well, no, I've written lots of articles, but a couple of them, I have spent a lot of time um, doing that search optimization on and got them ranking higher on Google, which is something that you can absolutely learn. You know, if this is something that you're interested in, got them ranking on Google and that just automatically brings in subscribers every day. And so if you can set this up for your clients and, and get some of those articles ranking for them, it pays off. It really does. This is all in module uh, let me think, one of the VA crash course, we talk about like Google search engine console, the Google, and we talk about how to use SEO words to make content. But I want to give you an example. When I first started working with my furniture painter client, I said, well, what's your number one question? We kind of nailed the several birds with one stone. Uh, is that the right saying? That sounds so bad. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It, well, that's so, it. <laughs> most asked questions was what kind of paintbrush do you use? Cause she would use different ones on different things. And so it helped us answer people, give them a resource. And we built a whole lead magnet based on her top five paintbrushes and which were vastly different. And now I know all about paintbrushes. I, I could educate you, but this thing is doing so well. We have a pin for it on Pinterest. We have several on Pinterest. We have, we can, every time she does a Facebook live, we could or should be linking to this, reminding people if they want to know what she uses here. And we also have all of our blog content is funneling people to this, uh, this lead magnet who might be interested in painting furniture and who might be interested in learning from her and taking a course. So you can see how it really starts to get the right people into her email list. Step yeah. Forward. And I love that that first question was like, what's the most common questions that you get? That is such a such a good place to start. Like when it comes to content ideas for anything, whether it's for the lead magnet or for content that you're creating, like your client knows, <laughs> your client knows what the most common questions are. And if they don't, that is so easy to ask about. And then you can do the tactic you talk about with Facebook. When people are in a Facebook group saying, Hey, what paintbrush do you use? You could just post it. And even if you're posting it third party, it still works. Like, Oh, Hey, my client gets this question all the time. Here you go. And then yeah. more people have seen your, your lead magnet. Perfect. So yes. I like me personally, you know, being the, the journalism writer, I like the content game. I like coming up with ideas and finding what people are searching and delivering something valuable and then like trying to get them to click on to the next thing. Like to me, that's fun. It sounds like it's your thing too. Oh yeah. Well, it becomes almost like a game. Like, oh, yeah. can I optimize this more? Well, um, it's more fun when you're writing for yourself, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Well, um, and so, but I did want to, you know, add one more here. This is something that I've been thinking a lot about recently for folks who, uh, you know, for those of you who are working with clients who are like, I don't want to create content, you know, and I don't want to hire content, like content is not my thing. There are other ways to grow an audience. And specifically, if you have a client who is more video inclined or more speaking inclined, you can absolutely grow a list, grow an audience through getting interviewed on podcasts and getting interviewed on uh, Facebook lives, <laughs> much <Yeah>. like this. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, if you have someone who you're working with, who, um, you know, is saying, I want to be building my audience, you could easily be helping them starting to pitch podcasts, starting them to, you know, help them develop those relationships with people. And, uh, really at this point, a lot of, a lot of podcasts, especially don't necessarily like the, the lead magnet shared directly on the show, but, um, the lead magnet can just be on your homepage. That's the technique that I use. I just have it on the homepage. Cause then if someone is listening to the show and they're like, Oh, Hey, that was great content. They'll just go check out the URL. Most podcast hosts are happy to have the URL of your website shared, right? They want to promote who they have on. Um, and then that lead magnet is right there, ready to convert. Yeah. And then have it on your Instagram, in your, in your bio or your, you know what I'm trying to say? Link yes. bio. 
Plaster it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So when people do search you, it comes up and it's really obvious. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so those are really, those are kind of the four big buckets about what I'm seeing working right now. And I know, again, content and getting interviewed on podcasts, those are both, you know, really big ones, but you just got to get started with one. You know, uh, if, if your client is like, I want to grow in some way, it's like, you don't need to do all of them. Just choose one thing that you know works that you've seen work for other people and start implementing and implementing because it's all about consistency. Yeah. And I see a lot of pushbacks from clients because they're like, oh, I don't want to blog like you were talking about, but they're already doing Facebook lives every week or showing some kind of DIY process. So I'm like, just make sure you mention this link several times in your yeah. Facebook live. Hit it early, hit it middle, hit it end, and we'll put the link in the description. And if you forget it, we can go back and add it. But getting your client to talk about it, I spent a lot of time building these lead magnets for clients and then they they don't talk about it. And it <laughs> makes me mad. <laughs> like I've worked so hard on this. And it, we really have to be a broken record and they have to be reminded. They have a lot going on in their brains and they need to be reminded that email list audience building is a priority if they are going to have success. And that's how you as a digital media VA can pop in and be way more than a VA, be like their business boss. <laughs> More or less, we become their boss or their sidekick real quick. <laughs> right. That's how you become indispensable. Keep bringing them new ideas. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to encourage everybody to jump into Jesse's lead magnet. It's all about how to make lead magnets better, which you should totally look at. Now, inside the crash course, I teach you the things you need to build a lead magnet, but I don't really go into the subjective part of it. And I think this, Jesse's like, her guide here is going to help you because your clients are going to come to you with questions and you're going to need some confidence to what to tell them and think it through. Like, why is this a good idea? Let's do it. Or, hey, maybe we should tweak this. So definitely go get your email in there and then watch the emails that spit out. Pay attention to Jesse's emails and you can learn a lot from doing that too with other people online. Well, thanks so much, Emily. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is so fun. And this is such like a big deal. This is one of the things on my uh, most requested tasks that I do is help clients build these lead magnets. And if you can be somebody like Jesse, who can do some writing too and help them and actually build them, you'll get your foot in the door so quick. Trust me on that one. So, well, thank you. Is there anything, is there anything else that I feel like we're missing something? I was like, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, I've got my notes in front of me. So I just ran through all my notes. But um, are there any specific questions um, oh, either you. that you have, Emily, or that other people might be having? I'm seeing a lot of people just enjoying the show. <laughs> but if we get questions, please ask them. Jesse can come back yep. and answer them. And if you're let us know if you've done a lead magnet for a client, I would love to know or if this is something you want to learn that this is a great way to use the right words in an interview and get hired, like come to the table with these ideas and your client will be interested in working with you because they'll know that you get it. You know, they're trying to build an audience online. So, Absolutely. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much again, Jesse. We'll see you online. All right. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye. Jesse shared some amazing tips for email marketing. Put those in your back pocket. Go grab her ultimate guide to high converting lead magnets at the website. We'll put the link in the show notes. And just a little hint, hint for all of you behind the scenes, this guide will make you look like an all start with your clients. So many of my clients come to me wanting help building their welcome sequences, writing their emails, and also building their sales funnel. So getting a good lead magnet is imperative. Next week, we're going to dive into social media. I may have a little rant for you and a big, big, big lesson I learned recently with a client about organizing their social media. It's going to be a good one. See you then. If you're ready to learn the digital marketing and social media skills that will get you hired online, head over to vacrashcourse.com where you can learn about my five-week program, the Digital Media VA Crash Course. Small business owners and solopreneurs want to hire someone who gets it and who can help them implement just about everything. They're looking for a magical assistant who does it all. With my comprehensive training, you can get your foot in the door and become a unicorn. Check out vacrashcourse.com.
uh, oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. There's something I wanted to say there. But um, about getting the right people in who are going to yes, be. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. And then the other thing. Oh, sorry. Did I talk over you here? No, go ahead. Okay. Building their emails, not building their emails, 